In the next five minutes, I'll teach you how to turn this to this. So let's dive in. Let's start the project by adding an icosphere and deform it by a displaced modifier. You can use any other geometry that you like. Add a hair particle system. Increase the number and segment to have dense and smooth curves. And then it's time to add a turbulence. Increase the strength, flow, noise amount and size. Just try to find the shape that don't have so many small noise. Go to modifier and convert it to mesh. Then this part is over. In geometry node, the first node that we are going to use is a mesh to curve node. Then add a resample curve to have more control on the vertices in the curve. Having too much vertices in curve can make two issues. The first one is a laggy viewport and the second one is increase of render time. The next node we need is a trim curve. By increasing and decreasing the end value, we can control the growth of curve. For adding thickness to curves, add a curve to mesh and then add a curve circle and connect it to profile curve. Then decrease the resolution and radius. To add a sphere to the end of the curve, I use instance on point node. The way to tell Blender, hey, I don't want this sphere be all over the curve, just use it on the end of it, is to use an endpoint selection node. And then let's create an sphere and make the segment half of the default. Add the sphere to the geometry node by just dragging and drop and connect the geometry to the instance. Let's decrease the scale of the sphere to see what we do have here. To disappear the sphere on the start of the curve, on endpoint selection node, use zero for a start point. And now if we change the end value on the trim curve node, as you can see the sphere is moving perfectly. Okay, let's add a join geometry node to join the curve and the spheres. What I have in my mind to make the animation beautiful is to at the first point let the curve grow and after some point the sphere show up. To create this effect, we need two other nodes, a spline parameter and a color ramp. Connect the length to factor and turn the white color to some grayish color to scale down the sphere. And now if we close the black color to the gray color, we can have a beautiful transition on how a sphere is showing up. And let's change the end value on trim curve to see what we do have here. To make final result look better, I duplicate the sphere and also duplicate the nodes that we made for the previous sphere. In object info, I select the new sphere. I'll also connect this one to join geometry node. And in color ramp, I'll decrease the value to have a little bit darker gray. As you can see, it make offset between two spheres. We are only two node away to finish this part. To prevent organized and in order growth of curve, I'll use a noise and color ramp to make it more random. Connect noise to color ramp and color ramp to the end parameter of trim curve. So if we move the black color in color ramp, we can control the growth of curves. And this is the parameter that we have to add keyframe to make the animation. For adding material to spheres and curve, we use a set material right before the join geometry node. Select one of object in the scene like sphere and make three material in it with correct name so we can find them easily in geometry node. And then in geometry node on set material mode, assign them to the right part. For the curve material, I choose a sign color for base color and the roughness on 0.16. Put the transmission on 1 and the IOR on 1.1. 1 
also add another cyan color to emission and for emission and strength I use a Fresnel node put the value on 1.1 for the bigger sphere I used a cyan color for base color used 0.2 for roughness turn the transmission on 1 and use 0.5 for transmission roughness and for smaller sphere I just add an emission material and this is the result Don't forget that you can download the file of this project for free on my camera. Subscribe.